Hello, and welcome to Down the Fleece Hole. My name is Barb, and I am your host. I'm coming to you from mid-Michigan, and today is July 13th, 2019. It's been a couple of weeks since my last podcast, and uh, I've had some new changes uh, to announce to you guys. Uh, I've started two new groups uh, that uh, you can follow for uh, show notes, and uh, to be able to go and to interact, um, share projects, uh, you know, just general chit-chat if you want. Uh, the first group is on runraveled.com. Uh, and the group's name is Down the Fleece Hole Podcast. And the second group that you can find is on Facebook. And it is also the same name, Down the Fleece Hole Podcast. And you can request to join that group if you'd like. Um, later on in the show, at the end, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, the decisions that I have made. Um, and... You know, for now, I just want to go ahead and share uh, the things that I've been working on, and then if you want to listen to those, uh, to the things that I have to say, um, and I'm not really going to get into it a whole lot, um, but I am going to share some uh, some groups, uh, some new things uh, I have found um, within the online community uh, for fiber arts that I feel have a very positive uh, message and a very bright future. And so, those I will be sharing with you at the end of this podcast. So, uh, the last time I was with you guys, I had shown you uh, my olive uh, tree sweater that I had been working on. And the uh, designer of that uh, pattern is Meiju uh, KP. And I've actually come along quite a bit on this sweater. Um, I had just recently, I had started it when I had first uh, done my podcast. And I have actually now gotten to the point that I have separated from my sleeves and uh, working the body. And then I will be going and uh, working the sleeves. And my little stitch or my progress uh, tracker right here. Yeah, hold that up a little closer so you can see. So I've gotten quite a bit done on this now. The lace pattern on the back is coming out really beautiful, and let's see if I can show you guys how that looks. And it's coming out really beautiful, and um, so far I've been very happy with this. And I've actually started thinking about maybe some ways that I could actually go and I could change this around for myself um, as a future pattern um, with the lace. Uh, there's a set number uh, that you use for the back panel, and uh, I think, you know, it could probably incorporate uh, quite a few different type of lace patterns within it, as long as you can go and make those numbers work. And so that's some ideas that I'm having, uh, I've been thinking about a little bit for future projects, um, and just kind of a way to kind of make this a little bit more original and unique in my own. Uh, so... Hopefully, um, I'll have, well, I will have this done by fall, and that, um, and I've really been enjoying the knit on this. Uh, it's been pretty easy, and uh, the, uh, um, oh, what was I going to say? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, it's been a very friendly uh, pattern. Um, if you're a very new lace knitter, you might, you know, you might find it a little bit intimidating, especially um, when you do at the very beginning when you're doing the neck and shoulder shaping uh, with the short rows, uh, because of the fact that uh, with the way the charts are set up, uh, they are set up in the traditional way where you read the chart from right to left, and then what happens is on your next row and that it's uh, the chart is every single row instead of every other and so when you're doing your short rows and you're doing that shaping you end up having to go and then have to read that chart from left to right on the next row so that you go and you put your lace in the right way um, it takes a little bit of thinking but it's not that difficult 
And then I also ended up going and I decided to start another project. I actually, I cast it on a new shawl and I started that earlier this week, uh, just a couple days ago. And I am doing, it is called uh, Biophilia, it's B-I-O-P-H-I-L-I-A, and it is by Mary Ann uh, Mace. It's a free pattern that I found available on uh, lovecrafts.com. Uh, it's also available through other sources if you want. And uh, so far this pattern has been very easy to follow. Um, it is a crescent shaped shawl as I said. It is started from the top and knitted down. It also ends up using a few different techniques. Um, it uses mock cables in which uh, you go and you do a right and left twists on uh, the yarn, um, on your stitches. And then also there is a lace section and at the very bottom of the shawl it uses a pico edge and uh, you place beads or you can place beads uh, when you do the pico edging. And I'll show you guys a picture of this one. There we go. So, might be a little difficult to see. Hopefully, the glare is not too bad off of the sheet protector. Uh, but a bit intricate you know, looking on the bottom. But so far, it has been uh, pretty easy to do. And. This is my start so far on the Biophilia shawl. And so I've gone through and I've done my uh, stock and net uh, body. And I just started on the first chart. Uh, there's a total of four charts. Uh, two of them have the uh, mock cable twists. And then uh, you have your uh, two that have your lace pattern, um, and I believe the fourth chart might be uh, for the Pico bind off, and that with uh, the bead placements, actually. It's, yeah, that is the fourth chart. Um, so, the other thing is uh, with the yarn I'm using, I ended up having some yarn that I had picked up earlier uh, in the year and that from uh, one of my local yarn stores and the yarn is uh, from Classic Elite Yarns and it's Yuri and it's a 75% superwash merino and a 25% nylon and it's in about a fingering weight. Uh, the yarn I got I believe it's actually it's a discontinued at least color. Um, the color itself is called Pansy and as you can see it kind of has a bit of a color pooling. Hold that up a little closer again for you guys to see. This is actually, it, to me, it's looking like it might be coming off kind of a blue, um, but it's more of a darker purple and a lighter, um, like lilac, in it. So it'll be interesting to see how this actually works out uh, with the yarn and that, especially with um, the colors um, and the pooling that it's doing. Uh, the size of the shawl uh, that the pattern has given is that it's 15 inches deep and 77 inches wide. Uh, and there's also additional instructions that are available uh, for doing a larger shawl or if you're using a lace weight yarn of how you can go and make that work and get actually a decent sized shawl out of it. Um, she has two different directions actually. Uh, one just tells you how many uh, the oh <laughs> having a hard time finding my words today um it gives you the number of um stitches in that within the sets that you have to increase in that so i believe it's 17 stitches and plus you know so many others and that um for anything additional beyond what she gave in the original and then she also has a second option that you could use where you go and you do an additional 10 roll rows of um, just the basic uh, stock in that that's been set up. Along with that, then you go and she has 
two additional rows that you do that gets you set up the rest of the way that'll give you the right number of stitches to work within the chart itself. And uh, on her pattern, uh, she's got in some really good information. Uh, she gives additional instructions that are available for doing uh, the larger shawl, like I said. Um, there's the charts for the mock cables and the lace. And not only does she have the charts, if you're a person who does not like reading charts or you don't know how to read charts, she also has a written um, part for the charts that are that is done and is easy to follow. So you don't have to feel like you're limited if you don't know charts itself. Um, I don't know if you can hear it. I have uh, a couple of cats that have decided to come on in here and uh, playing around a little bit. So you might hear some meowing. Um, hopefully they keep themselves behaved pretty well. Uh, so my thoughts on this pattern so far, like I said, I feel like it's very well written out so far. Uh, these instructions are easy to follow. Uh, she uses some different techniques that might be new uh, to you. Um, she uses a, a lifted increase um, in the shawl to help uh, go into encourage the shape of that crescent. And she gives instructions actually within there how to do the lifted increase. She also gives instructions for doing the right and left twists and recommends that you follow her instructions that she's written out um, so that you get the look that she had uh, designed uh, for the shawl. And that's, as we all know, there are a lot of times multiple ways in which you can do something, um, but they can give you different looks, different results. And then she also gives instructions for the bead placement. Um, there are nups that are used, which she gives instructions for. And there's also some uh, double and quadruple yarn overs that are used. And when you do your, your pearl back row, there's instructions on how to go and how to handle those double and quadruple uh, yarn overs. Uh, the stock and nut section was very quick to knit. Uh, very easy and that did that in a couple of evenings watching uh, Netflix and uh, started uh, actually was ready to start on doing um, my charted parts uh, today. The yarn itself that I'm using so far I've really liked. Um, the only issue I had with it was the way that the skeins were done. They didn't use ties on the skeins. They ended up going and they took the ends of uh, the skein itself and they wrapped it through itself several times. And I tried to get those um, unwrapped, but what happened was there were still things that I didn't get unwrapped fully. And so as I was going and trying to cake my yarn and that off my yarn swift, I was running into issues where the strand that I was going and I was taking and putting onto my ball winder was getting caught up in other loops and um, eventually I got it figured out uh, but it was really that to me was kind of a hassle and I've used skein yarn before and have had it where you know the skeins are very easy you go and you put them on your yarn swift you know you might have to do a little bit of adjustment to get it you know even and then you just go and that this was to me very fiddly and it was just a bit irritating um, especially on a yarn you know that is not you know that cost a bit of money it's not like it was just you know something I went and got from one of the big box stores you know so I would expect a better quality and something that was easier to deal with so that was a little bit disappointing to me um, and then for my spinning, I have been doing uh, my spinning for Tour de Fleece and have not been spinning quite as much as I have, uh, as I might want, but I've also been doing a lot of knitting. Um, and so at the beginning of uh, the podcast, I did show uh, some pictures of the fiber uh, that I was doing, and I actually I showed that fiber uh, last week, or two weeks ago. And I ended up going and I prepped it for spinning. Uh, and what I did was with my braids, I actually, I opened up my braids 
And then I broke the braid in half, and I broke it in a half again and a half again, and I think it was a total of about eight times. So that I had pieces of fiber that were about 14 inches long. And then the other thing I did was I ended up going and I split that, uh, that chunk of fiber in half. And as you can see in another picture, what I did was each braid I kept together and I put in its own little pile. And after I got all that done, what I did was I did random draws from each pile and put them together in little nests and ended up going and in my one bag I put them in and I don't know if you can if you can see it a little bit it's in there um but so each one there's just like a little little collection of uh, fiber and that uh, from the different braids and what I've been doing as I've been spinning is I just reach in my bag and I just randomly, I just pull out a piece of fiber and that, and then I go and I spin it. And like I said, it's probably about, I would say about 14 inches long. And I haven't been doing anything to go and, you know, try to say, you know, make sure I pick certain ones. Um, you know, I just go and I, I draw random. And the idea behind that is to mix the different braids together. Uh, I'm dealing with, um, I was, have five different braids, and uh, three of them had the same base, and the other two were the same base but different than the, other, the first three. The colorway is the same, but they are also hand dyed, and so there can be differences just within the braids, even if they were done all at the same time. And so my idea is to try to go and to get that all mixed together, so that my final yarn is going to have a more uh, continuous look to it. It's going to look more put together, and it should not have any real obvious differences. And so then when I go and I knit with that, it's not going to be looking like I ended up picking out, you know, had five different yarns that are slightly, you know, or five different skeins of yarn that are slightly different, but that they go and they meld together and that uh, they look more, um, they, it looks put together, it looks more planned, and then I don't have to worry about when I'm knitting having to go and knit from different skeins and that to go and to mix the yarn up. So I have been doing some spinning and I'm not sure exactly how much I've gotten but I'm thinking it's probably close to about four ounces and see if you guys can see that. And this is also, this is being spun on my electric eel wheel. Um, this is the 5.2 and you can see that tensile in there that just gives so much shine and then on the other braid there was also silk and so this has been turning out really well and that um, it just seems like some days you know especially after I work I get home and I'm just tired I don't really want to do a whole lot and when I have to go and be back at work the next day it just it limits what I'm able to do but I've gotten quite a bit done so that's actually you know even though it doesn't feel like it's a lot it's quite a bit of an accomplishment <coughs> The other thing that I uh, worked on uh, over the past week was um, getting uh, my patterns that I have saved on Ravelry um, off and onto my computer. And uh, I was working on that. It took quite a bit of time to go into download everything. I had some stuff that was saved that was from different, um, was posted on different websites um, or people's uh, blog blogs who um, had put patterns up and linked them over to Ravelry, but didn't actually have them posted on there. And so I spent uh, about a good afternoon and part of an evening going and um, downloading the files and getting them organized on my computer. And so I ended up setting up a uh, folder that has just my knitting patterns in it, and I'll actually do a uh, 
a little tutorial of what I did. Um, so in case there's somebody who might be looking for a way to try to organize their patterns, if you are wanting to try to just not be using the internet as much, being so dependent on the internet, or any other reason, um, I'll show you what I did. And when I do this uh, little video tutorial, I'm going to end up actually probably doing handheld on the camera. I don't have um, any uh, software for going and for uh, taping the on-screen part of my computer. And so hopefully it'll work out. Um, but what I did was I went and I downloaded everything and I set up one folder that's just knitting patterns and within that folder I ended up setting up different categories and that and I broke it down into different types of patterns. So I had some patterns for going and making knitted bags, um, patterns for scarves, shawls, sweaters, uh, blankets, hats, mittens and so each one got its own little folder. And then I took and I moved the uh, patterns into the different folders depending on what kind of pattern it was. And then the other thing was in my shawls pa uh, pa uh, patterns, I found I have quite a few shawl patterns. Um, and I have a lot of them that I have downloaded um, that are by M. Mario. And so in my shawl patterns, I ended up going in, in that folder. I designated a folder just for the M. Mario uh, ones and then I also went and I broke those down into further folders also uh, in the Mario and also in just the shawls where I ended up doing it by shape and that so I have ones for asymmetrical uh, circular crescent uh, tri triangular uh, I have some M Mario ones that are actually square shaped and he also did some uh, panel uh, type shawls and so I ended up going, I got that all done. And, you know, that was good and that, but the only problem I had was that, you know, when you look at it, all you see is you just see this little thing that says PDF. And, okay, I know I have this folder. It has a whole bunch of, you know, has hat patterns in it. But what does, you know, what do the hats look like? You know, just looking at the name of the pattern, I might not be able to really remember what the pattern itself looked like. And so I ended up talking to my boyfriend, and uh, he does a lot of stuff with computers and is very knowledgeable with that. And I asked him, I was like, is there, you know, anything you can think of, you know, that I would be able to look and see what, you know, to be able to see the picture with the pattern. And so the solution he had, which actually is, I think, is going to work really well, is there is a program that um, I downloaded, and it's called Foxit. Uh, Fox is in the animal, F-O-X, and then I-T. And it's a free program. Uh, they do, when you open it up, the program itself up, it does do a little advertisement, um, but you just close that out. But what's nice is when you're actually in the file folders, what you can do is you can go and just do a single click on the pattern on the file. And next to where your uh, list of uh, files are, it gives you a preview window. And from that preview window, you can actually look and you can see what is in that PDF file. And that allows you to go and to see those pictures. And just a down arrow, you could go and you can browse through, you know, a file folder without any problems and see what kind of patterns you have. Which to me makes it really nice because a lot of times uh, when I'm wanting to knit something, there's times that I don't know what exactly what pattern I want to use. I might have an idea of what type of thing I want to knit and that I have an idea, you know, I want to do a sweater or I want to, you know, I'm looking to do a hat. But I don't know what exactly I'm in the mood for doing. And so what's nice is from that I can go and I just go to that category and I can search through what I have. And I have a lot of patterns that I, uh, I've uh, downloaded, a lot of free patterns. And more than likely, I'm probably never going to knit all those patterns um, in my life. But it's nice to have that, uh, those choices and to have that available. And to have something that you can go and you can access, even if you don't have internet. You know, if you're out somewhere, 
you know, you can go and just take a look at, you know, take a look at your, uh, you know, at your files and see. And the other thing is, is that I will probably actually take that file folder and I'm going to save it to a thumb drive. So that way if there's something that happens to my computer or if I have access to a computer somewhere else and I don't have my computer, from that thumb drive I can still go and I can access my knitting patterns. Um, so I will go and I will do a, a little tutorial on that and just uh, just to kind of show people what that looks like and you know if that's something that works for you that is great and that you know the things things that we can do to make things easier for ourselves is always nice um, and you know I'm still looking you know at patterns and that um, I've been looking to see other sites that I can find patterns on. Uh, Love Crafts uh, has quite a few and I actually I saved a couple of uh, shawl patterns that I came across. Um, there's also blog sites that are available where people have gone and uh, have done patterns and they've posted those. Um, some of them are available in PDF form. Some of them you have to kind of finagle things. and the ones that aren't available in PDF, um, what you know, one of the things that you can always do is you can do a copy and paste in that, you know, just go and, you know, just select, you know, what you want to put in in that, you know, because we don't always want to have all those advertisements and stuff that are on those web pages. But just, you know, do a select of what you want to put into your pack, you know, into your pattern, what you want. Do a copy on it. In use your word processing um, software. I myself use uh, Open Office, and it works really well for me. And you know, you just copy that. You can go and you can actually, you know, you can take and for you know, you can use the photo that they've used. You know, I would not, you know, I would never go and you know post something like that online, you know, under my own, you know, if I did, you know, if I was using it, I would give credit to the person, um, you know, but for personal use to be able to keep an idea of what the pattern is that you're using and that, you know, you can copy images, you can download images off the internet, it's pretty easy to do and that, but again, you know, you give credit, you know, to the person, you know, you give credit to the creator, you give credit to the photographer and that, you know, claiming something as your own and that when it's not is never right. Um, but you have what you want. You can actually go and then you can export it out as a PDF file. And once you do that, that PDF file, you can go and you can put into your files and that for your, you know, for your knitting patterns or for your crochet patterns. And it's an easy way to go and to keep access to things. And then you don't have to print every single thing out either. And that I do have a lot of things that I have printed out. Um, but usually when I do print things out, it's because I'm getting ready to knit something. I'm getting ready to use a pattern. And so I'll print that out. And then I have my own system of um, my three ring binders that I use in that. I have a small three ring binder, which I actually got right next to me. And it's about, I think, a one inch uh, binder that I use that I go and I put my current works, the current things that I'm working on. Those go in there. And then I have additional binders that I go and I put my printed out patterns into. And that still needs a little bit of organizing and that, um, you know, try to get that so it's a little easier to, to go through. But, you know, if I went and I printed out 400 some patterns, the amount of space that that would take up is quite a bit. So like I said, you know, I wait until I'm actually ready to use the pattern and then I go ahead and I print that out and use it. It just, to me, it saves time, it saves space, and that, and especially with the fact that um, there's, you know, there is a lot that's available that you can use, you know, uh, through computers and that, um, and you don't have to do it all online. It can be kept, you know, just on your own personal computer or your own personal tablet. You know, there's things that we can do electronically to help, and so just some of the things that I've been doing. Um, <clears throat> so.
So, that's what's been keeping me busy over the last couple of weeks. Um, I do have some acquisitions, um, just a couple of things. I have a Japanese knot bag uh, that I got, and I actually had ordered this. Uh, a couple of weeks ago and was actually waiting it for it to be delivered the last time I had done my podcast. And um, I've seen these a couple of times being used uh, for knitting projects and I like the idea of it. And I was in the mood, I wanted something that had sheep on it. So I went on to Etsy and I looked and I could not find anybody in the United States that was using a sheep patterned fabric. Um, to go and to make these uh, bags out of. However, what I did find was I found that there were some people uh, overseas. Uh, there was one person in Germany and then there's another person uh, in Wales who has been making these. And so the one I ended up getting was I got from a shop on Etsy. Uh, they are located in Wales. Let's see. And so, you can see that. And I'll hold that up closer so you can actually see see the sheep pattern on it. So it's just little sheep and that is just kind of cute, I thought. But the bag itself is really, I, th I like it. It's well made. It's a handmade item. Uh, the stitching is very nice. This cost of the bag itself was really good. It was reasonable and that um, it was within the same price range as uh, things that were being sold in the United States uh, were being sold for, if not maybe just, you know, a little bit less. You know, so there wasn't a huge price difference. Uh, the shop uh, that I got it from is Wooly Monkey uh, Shop on Etsy. They are located in Hay on Way uh, in Wales. And uh, she was very, very pleasurable, pleasurable to work with. Um, she shipped out um, my package within 24 hours after the uh, order was placed. Uh, it did take a little bit of time with the international shipping uh, for it to get to me. Uh, but I did actually get a Etsy notification uh, that my package had arrived uh, when it got here. So that was actually really nice because with the international shipping, you don't always get notifications um, and you don't have tracking and that. So that's kind of, you know, sometimes when you're ordering something like that and you really don't have a way to track it, you know, I've, I'm a big one into tracking. I like to be able to track my packages. I like to know when they're coming. I like to know when they're going to be delivered because um, some days I have stuff that's delivered when I'm not home and I'm at work. So, you know, I like to know that something has been delivered and, you know, know that I'll be looking for something when I get home. Um, but she was very, very fast. Within 24 hours, she had the package out. Um, the shipping itself was very reasonable in that I actually paid less on my shipping than I have for items that have been shipped in the United States. And that it was less than $4 for shipping. And that, and the price of the bag and that, like I said, I ended up, I paid probably about the same as what some of the ones that are um, selling, are, are selling them for uh, free shipping on Etsy. And that, um, you know, I paid no more than, you know, what those guys are, you know, charging. And that, and like I said, I wanted something with sheep. And so I was able to actually, you know, I found, I found something that worked, you know, found something I liked. Uh, she also sent a very nice card and that, and I thought that was just kind of a, a nice touch. I don't know. I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see the print on this or not. I'm getting quite a bit of glare from my, uh, from my window behind me. Let's see. I don't know. But uh, I'm, I apologize. I'm still trying to get used to how the camera angles and stuff work. But it says, your order made our day. We hope this parcel makes yours. And then on the back of the card, there was a little handed, or there was a hand wrote, written note that says, Dear Barbara, thank you for your order. We hope you like the knot bag. Kind of regard, Kay and Susie. So just a nice little personal touch and that. And again, like I said, just, you know, very reasonably priced, very well made. And that, so I'm going to enjoy being able to use this bag.
the other thing is I had been uh, looking at the uh, Paradise uh, Fibers uh, Club of the Month, uh, Fiber Club of the Month, and had been thinking about that for a while. And I decided to give it a try, and that I figure I'm going to try it out for at least maybe a couple of months and see what I think. Um, one of the things that I I'm hesitant about when it comes to the fiber clubs is a lot of them go and they give you just like small amounts of fiber and you get several different types of fiber but it's in these small amounts and so then the problem I run into is trying to think of how am I going to use that um, you know because it's not enough on its own to do something with so you end up having to blend with it or you know you you have to figure a way to make it work. Um, one of the things that kind of did attract me uh, to the Paradise one is the fact that they do, it's a six to eight ounce um, fiber and that um, that you get. Um, they do a couple of little small additional gifts into it and um, the other thing is is that it's a it's a month by month. You are not committed to doing three, six months or a year at a time. You're not prepaying. You're paying month by month and at any time you can go and you can cancel. <coughs> um, so one of the things that you know I will say is that the boxes themselves they do come with uh, scented in that or at least this one did. Um, and there are some people that are very sensitive uh, to scents, to smells. Uh, but what I was reading is it looks like that their international bag or international boxes um, they send out, I believe, are um, are their international ones. I believe are not scented, and so. It, there's a good possibility if somebody was interested in it, but you've been holding off because of the fact that it's scented, you know, I would reach out to them and ask them, you know, is it possible for you to go and to get a box that is not scented, that's an unscented box? And, you know, you never know. They might be able to do that. That might be something they could accommodate. You know, it's just something that they don't put into the box then. So the box I got uh, for this month, it came with uh, four ounces of chunky chromatic carded Coradale and that there's eight different colors and they're at a half an ounce each um, and they came in this little organza bag and so this is definitely this is going to be something that's going to be kind of like a, a blending uh, type of project and some of these colors you know I might try you know blending some of the colors together you know, and if I do that, it's only going to be like, you know, two of them at a time um, to see about maybe playing around with, you know, with blending and getting different color, um, you know, colors from, you know, from blending something. So this is uh, the red and it's not, you know, it's a, just a short little, little thing of fiber. Um, but you know, this could be used with something else. It's just a matter of, you know, trying to get kind of creative with it and seeing. Um, and again, like I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm only going to try this, you know, I'm going to give it a couple of months and see what happens, see what they send. And I might decide that this isn't for me and that, um, cause I do like having kind of a larger amount of fiber, um, you know, and having, you know, being able, even if it's only a skein, to be able to make a project out of it, you know, because there are quite a few things that you can make out of one project um, or one skein, you know, one skein projects that are available. Uh, the other thing that they sent uh, in this month was a two ounce rosemere, which is a cashmere and rose fiber micro blend of 50-50. And it came in this little silver organza bag. And this stuff is very, very soft, and that, um, 
Yeah, I, I know you can't you can't feel the softness through the camera and that, but this stuff is very, very soft. And it's shiny and that. I don't know if you can don't know if you'll be able to see the shine in it, but it has got a bit of a sheen. And that and with the two ounces, you know, I tend to spin fine. I tend to spin uh quite a bit of light fingering uh, to lace weight yarns and I will probably spin this up in a lace weight. Um, I might hold off for a little bit before I do and try to get a little bit lighter uh, or finer on my lace uh, spinning and that but as a lace weight I think I'll be able to get enough out of this and that to go and, you know, to do, even if it's a, just a little small, you know, small project, you know. But I should be able to make something from that without any problems. And then the other thing that they had was uh, they had a yellow brick road progress marker, which actually you saw on the olive tree sweater. And then they did a fun bag, a fun size bag of Skittles and a limited edition vinyl sheep sticker. Wizard of Use. Let's see. So there we go. There's there's the little the little sheep sticker. Um, and then they go and they give you actually they do a newsletter. And they give you um kind of you know just a little thing you know of, you know, this one's theme was somewhere over the rainbow and that. And it gives you some project ideas and that. So gives like this one has a whimsical socks uh, project idea and that for it. Uh, you could do, you know, they're saying you could do fractal spinning uh, with the Coradale that they sent. Um, the Skittles, they have a dying with Skittles. And um, they uh, they make a reference to Chemnitz tutorials, um, but that you can use candy for dyeing, and that and uh, Chemnitz tutorials is available on YouTube. And I have not checked this out yet. Um, I have done some dyeing before. I do um, when I do dyeing, it is with acid dyes, uh, and I like. I like with the acid dyes that I know that as long as I do it correctly, as I if I go and I you know I get the heat up to the correct you know where it needs to be, I use my vinegar or you know my acid to, you know to help to set my dye. My project should not fade over time if I set it correctly. I'm not going to have um, dye bleeding out of my wool out of my fiber, and so. I haven't really done a lot when it comes to the Kool-Aid dyeing or uh, the food gel, and I know that those things work, um, and a lot of times, you know, they get good results with those. Um, but it's just, it's not kind of, I have not really ventured into that. Um, when I when I decided to, you know, to try doing dyeing, I, I went right to the acid dyes and that. I got the materials I needed. I got my silver, or my um, stainless steel pots. And that um, I have utensils that are specific for dyeing. Um, I do have a couple of other things that I'm going to try, hopefully this summer maybe, or this fall. Um, but with trying to do some dyeing uh, with using uh, food steamers. And I found some, uh, uh, some of the Salvation, like Salvation Army and Goodwill, some of the thrift stores, that I was able to get those inexpensively. And that, so I'm going to try that out, um, and hopefully I'll be able to show you guys what I do with that when I do. Uh, but yeah, they get some ideas here and that, um, and you know, it's it's a neat idea. And like I said, I'm going to see what happens in that and see what you know, see what goes on. Okay, so now I'm just sorry, just taking a look to see how much. Uh, where we're at on time. I have a feeling that I've probably been talking really fast and that because it looks like I'm only about 16 minutes in. Um, okay, so 
There has been quite a bit um, over the last few weeks uh, that has been going on uh, when it comes to the uh, knitting, uh, spinning fiber community um, online, especially with Ravelry. Um, I'm not going to go into my politics about it. I'm not, you know, this isn't the place for me to talk about that. I don't talk about um, my political beliefs with very many people and that. Uh, there's a time and there's a place for that. But when Raverly decided to go and to um, put in their new policy that banned uh, support of uh, our, pres our current administration, our current president, and they basically went and they made a blanket statement that if you support Trump, if you support his, um, you know, if you support his administration, they say that, you know, that he's a white supremacist and that you're supporting white supremacy. And that basically what they have said is that if in any way you support the president, you know, you support the administration, you are a white supremacist. Um, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to say, you know, what my political views are. But this is coming from a website, you know, this is coming from a group who has for months been going and talking about being inclusive, going and having a safe place for people to come. This, it's months and months of this talk going on, um, them talking about racism, you know, uh, talking about, um, you know, just all these different issues. And they went and they have made it so that they have made a divide and that, and they have taken a lot of people and have made them feel very unsafe there. Um, you know, they've made blanket statements about people. And, you know, you cannot, you cannot be saying that we're inclusive to everybody, but yet go and say, because of your political beliefs, we're going to call you a white supremacist. We're going to call you a racist. They don't know these people individually. They don't, you know, they don't, you know, we, we interact online, you know, and you can go and you can put out whatever type of face you want to an online population. And you're not going to know me. I'm not going to know you. But they have taken and they have basically, you know, they've said, you know, you're unwelcome and that. And while they say, well, yeah, you can, you know, if you're a Republican or if you're a conservative, you can still use the site. You just can't talk about anything. You cannot talk about your beliefs. Um, but yet they're letting Democrats and liberals continue to go and to talk about what they believe. Uh, they are allowing, you know, they, they are allowing talk about Trump as long as it's not within going and anything that supports. And they have completely closed off being able to just communicate. Um, you know, in today's world, you know, we have, I feel like, lost the ability um, to be able to agree to disagree about issues. Um, a lot of times I think we have gotten to the point that it's people get to where they they think that, you know, if you don't agree with my thoughts, with my standpoints, with my views, you are wrong. And you need to change your way of thinking. And we have we have lost the ability to be able to communicate um, in a way in which it's constructive. 
we, you know, people, they, they resort to going and calling each other names. They resort to going and making accusations. And the online community, in some ways, has made that easy for that to be done because you're not, in reality, held accountable to what you say. And that most of what people say, there's a lot of things that people say online. I'm sorry, I got a cat that's getting a little close to the table there. Um, you know, people online, they can go and they can say pretty much whatever they want to say. And it's very hard to hold them accountable. And that there's things that people say that in real life, you know, they would probably not go up to another person and just say that to their face. You know, there are some people that would, but overall, you know, you would not go up to somebody and just say, well, you're a conservative, you're a white supremacist. You know, you would not do that. And because of those issues, um, because I feel that Raverly has become exclusive to a large group of people, um, I'm not closing my account at this time, but I am stepping back and I'm stepping away from Raverly in a lot of ways. I will no longer be purchasing patterns. I've actually taken uh, the one design that I had on there down. Um, I have left pretty much all the groups that I was a part of. I am working on getting my projects um, converted over and I will be taking those down. I have cleared out my library. Um, I will probably... I'm. I still haven't decided, but I may use their database for free pattern searches. Um, but I am not going to be clicking on through their advertisers. I will not be buying patterns on Raverly. Um, unfortunately, a couple of weeks before, or about, it was probably about a week or so before this occurred, um, I ended up going and I, I did the feature for going and being able to add uh, photos from my phone right onto Raverly and that it was like a five dollar charge you know for that little upgrade special and that and I did it and it's for a year you know and what did they do with my five dollars instead of supporting designers who are having issues with uh, their patterns being stolen and or, you know going and making the website better for all those who are using it they used it to go and to discriminate against a group of people. And, you know, I can't agree with that. I don't feel good about that. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of thoughts that, you know, you, you think of. And sometimes, you know, voicing those, um, putting those in a way in which it's understandable, um, is kind, can be very difficult. Um, <coughs> however, there are quite a few groups, um, there's websites that have been popping up since then, and that, um, you know, what they did was they made the opportunity for them to have competition, and that because there are many people who don't agree with what they did, um, there's many people who were hurt, you know, and, while I did not in, go and participate a whole lot in the groups and that, I had a couple that I, were, I was kind of getting, you know, more involved with. Um, but I know there's people that were on there that, you know, they did st spend a lot of time posting in those groups. They made friendships, um, you know, in the online community. And that, and some of those friendships they've left behind. And that, and there's a pain to that. You know, there is a grief to that. Um, but, with all that happening, and that there are a couple of groups that I have found, um, there's a group on Facebook that has been a very um, pres uh, a very positive and just kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, it's called Wolf and Sheep, and it was set up by uh, Stephanie uh, Kidnipper, um, and I apologize if I pronounced your last name wrong. Uh, but she has a YouTube channel, and uh, after this entire issue had occurred, 
and that uh, she made her decisions and she decided to start this group. And the only thing that she asks is that people be, you know, be kind to each other. You know, there is no need for us to go and call each other names. There's no reason for us to attack each other. And that I look when I go on to sites, you know, like Raverly, or I go on to different groups. You know, when they're a fiber-related group, if they're knitting, if they're spinning, whatever they are, I'm looking to go into to share with others that same interest. You know, I'm not looking to go and to to bring in other other aspects. You know, there's appropriate places, there are other places for that those kind of things to be brought into. You know, they do not need to be everywhere and that they do not need to be on a knitting uh, forum and that you know, there are appropriate places, you know, for that. I would not go to a political website or a political forum and start going and posting about my knitting and my spinning and expect to have a positive um, response to that. You know, people are going to look at me and go, what in the world are you doing? You know, that's not what we're here for. You know, we're here to talk politics. When I'm on a knitting, you know, I'm on a knitting website, spinning website, if I'm on, you know, a group, I am there to talk about knitting, spinning, you know, the things that I love about the fiber arts. That's why I'm there. So, um, with the Wolf and Sheep group, and it's Wolf, W-O-O-L-F, um, and it's in reference to Virginia Wolf, um, it's a very positive and uplifting group and that um very supportive and that uh, to each other and that and it's you know it's just a very nice little community um that you can find on Facebook and that so anyone who might be looking for you know for a place that is one option that you may be able to find um the other thing and that um there have been several websites uh that have been being set up and uh, the one that I found um, that I joined pretty early on is call, called Our Unraveled. And they started this, uh, this website up. It was started towards the end of June, and that was shortly after everything happened. And that there's already over 3,000 members on this site and that the growth has been just astounding um, and the changes that they have making have been astounding on this group. One platform and they're actually currently right now working on uh, going and updating uh, to new software and that um, they're setting it up in a way in which it will allow um, for subcategories on the forums and that to make it easier uh, to go and to look at. Uh, they have uh, option for groups available that is available to registered users uh, to use. They also have blog pages um, that they're setting up and I know they're still working on ironing out all the details and stuff of this but with the blog pages they're using that as a way for for members of the group to be able to go and to share their projects and that and basically create kind of project pages and that and um, I believe that they're working on a template that'll be easier to go and to put things in because you know sometimes it's hard to you know it's hard to know maybe what you feel might be important and then you, you might find later on that you missed something and you go, I wish I recorded that when I was, you know, working on that project and now I don't have it and I can't find it. I don't have the access access to it, you know, for whatever whatever reason. Um, but with this group, um, you know, I, I feel like there's going to be, you know, there's a bright future for it. Um, they're working on a marketplace uh, for designers to be selling their patterns. Um, and there's a, just a lot of opportunity. And I'm just going to read um, to you guys just on, um, on their site. And that uh, this was the forum etiquette that they uh, posted. And they posted this on July 4th. And that um, 
And this basically, it's kind of this is what, you know, the expectations for the community and that, you know, they want a welcoming place. They want a place where, you know, everybody can feel welcome. That you can come and, you know, talk about the things that you enjoy and that. So this came from the administrator and that. And it says, this will evolve over time, but I want to get some thoughts out on paper so that people weren't surprised at decisions. One, let's stay away from name calling, spreading rumors, and mean-hearted statements. If you don't agree with something and can't find the words to, calm, to calmly word a response, take a break and come back to it or keep scrolling. Number two, Raverly. Pretty much everyone came here for a place that was peaceful and welcoming. RAV has made their choices. I respect their right to make them, but their choice, but I won't run things that way. That means let's not blacklist vendors, harass anyone who chooses to stay on RAV. If people want to make their own choices about a vendor's statements, or statement, I respect that. But I'd rather just not be, I'd rather not just be the anti-RAV, really. Helping people with RAV tech support questions is fine as long as they don't turn out, as long as they don't turn into complaint sessions all over. Three, have fun, have discussions, learn things about people, be open to other points of view, listen to each other. I welcome the exchange of ideas. People can disagree without turning to name calling and crass language. Number four, political project threads are fine, but let's avoid big political discussions for the sake of political discussions. If someone makes a Trump hat or a Bernie scarf and posts their project and you don't like it, scroll by. I say this because the entire country is hung up on debating, arguing, mudslinging around politics. This tiny corner of the internet doesn't need to be. I love talking politics in the real world at the right place in right time. I don't think this is the place. Five, I will do my best not to pick sides in an argument. My goal is, to, is respectful discussion. I also hate deleting content. I feel like it, like it encourages revision, revisionist history. I will, however, edit comments if people have crossed the no name calling or harassing line. I will leave a note at the bottom saying, saying the reason I made an edit. I do my best to keep the original content meaning, but make the language non-abusive and more discussion based if I make an edit. And then uh, they gave some examples of crossing the line. So examples of things that cross the line calling liberals names like loony lefties, or calling conservatives names like WS in, uh, in quotes. And both of those, in the, the other one was in quotes too. Um, avatars that are clearly meant to instigate or make the site look bad, like a swastika iron cross or other widely under, understood symbols of hate aren't welcome here. So, you know, you know, this site, um, are unraveled, you know, I think they have it right. And, you know, time will tell in that. Um, I'm a member there and, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I don't always post, um, in discussions and stuff. Um, you know, but I think that, you know, they're heading in the right direction. You know, in our country, we have such a divide and that, um, you know, we have so much hurt. And when people feel strongly about something, you know, uh, you know, sometimes they, you know, they say things that, you know, they say things without thinking. Um, but, you know, we need to learn how to be able to, to get along with each other. You know, we have to learn how, you know, how to be able to allow somebody else to have an opinion that's different than our own. To be, sorry, I got a cat around my foot. Um, you know, we have to be able to allow people to have their own opinions. Be respectful of that. 
but we can do that in a kind way. You know, you don't have to be hateful and that, you know, ra you know, I am against racism and that I don't agree with it. You know, I don't agree with, you know, discrimination against any person and that I don't care, you know, if it's because of, you know, your color, it's because of your socioeconomic, you know, status you know, whatever it is, you know, you know, discrimination, you know, we do not need to be discriminating against each other in that, you know, there are things that we need to fix in our society and that, um, and we need to learn how to be able to treat each other better and that because in a lot of ways, um, you know, I feel like, you know, we've gotten to a point where you know, we don't respect one another and that, you know, we we don't think of others and that at times, you know, we sometimes we just think about ourselves or, you know, our views or our small group of people and, you know, we need to improve and that we need to make things better for ourselves, you know, for our future generations and that, um, so... It's kind of a heavy topic, and that again, like I said, you know, and a lot of times I I sit there thinking myself, you know, how do I want to express what I think, and you know, sometimes it's hard to really to find those words, you know, to you know to be able to express that. Um, but you know, if you watch through to the end, I appreciate it. Thank you, and that you know, like I said, I was going to say this to the very end. So those who didn't want to listen, you didn't have to listen. You could you know, you could stop on, you know. Um, I will put up show notes. Uh, my show notes are going to be on Facebook, um, on the group there, down the Fleece Hope podcast, and on ourunraveled.com. Uh, if you go to their first site, um, like I said, they are actually changing uh, software, doing updates and stuff. Um, you can go and you can just, you can do a web search for ourunraveled.com uh, or to go directly to the new site that they're working on and that which is where you would actually if you're a new member you would be going and you would be doing your sign up at it's uh v b as in boy dot r unraveled dot com so until next time i'll see you guys in two weeks and that i'll be posting up show notes and that um you know, please join in on discussions on the groups and that I'd love to see what it is that you are working on. If you have any questions, please let me know. And, you know, just treat, you know, treat each other well and that, you know, there's no, there's no reason why not. So until next time, I will see you guys. Please uh, share, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and, you know, leave any comments that you have, you know, I would, I would like to, you know, would like to hear back from you guys. And thank you for those who uh, have, I should have said this at the very beginning, uh, but thank you for any uh, new time, you know, first time watchers and that, and for any returning um, subscribers in that, thank you so much and that I appreciate, you know, just the fact that you're interested in hearing what it is that I have to say and what I have to share. And that, you know, that to me is just, you know, that's very uplifting. So until next time, I will see you later. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you.